Horror movies deal with all kinds of scary things, from vampires to werewolves to serial killers. But almost every horror movie has one thing in common, death. Lots and lots of death. Here are some of the most memorable horror movie deaths of all time. Directed by Ridley Scott, Alien hit theaters in 1979, and all these years later, people are still talking about the chestburster. The scene starts innocently enough. The crew of the Nostromo is sitting around a dinner table, enjoying a meal together. They're laughing and ribbing each other, and they're all glad their buddy Kane is doing okay. Just a few minutes earlier, Kane was unconscious, with some sort of creature attached to his face, but now he seems alright, until he starts convulsing. I don't want to talk about what it's made of. I'm eating this. <laughs> then, just a few seconds later, a parasite rips out of his chest, sending gallons of gore across the room. It's a little baby xenomorph, and it scampers away before anyone can kill it, leaving Kane's lifeless body behind. Even though it's been four decades since Alien hit theaters, this visceral scene still makes us nauseous to this day. Here's some good advice for horror movie characters. Stop visiting islands that are home to pagan cults. Those trips never end well. That's a lesson Thomas Richardson learns the hard way in Apostle. The film follows Thomas as he infiltrates the island of Ariston, hoping to rescue his sister from a bloodthirsty religious group. In the most gruesome scene in the film, Thomas is a bystander helpless to intervene as an innocent young man is killed in the most sadistic way possible. Jeremy is a lovable kid who's head over heels for a beautiful girl named Fionn. But when her psycho dad sticks a knife in her gut, Jeremy is framed for the crime. He's then tossed onto a nasty torture device called the Heathen's Stand. His head and limbs are held in place with bone-crushing vices, and as the poor guy screams in fear and pain, a rusty drill slowly but surely bores into his skull. It's a shockingly violent scene, made even worse because Jeremy is so kind-hearted. As that drill leaves a gaping hole where his brain used to be, we're turning our heads away from the screen as fast as possible. Hereditary is a film filled with shocking scenes, but arguably none more horrifying than the death of Charlie. She's got a major peanut allergy, and when she takes a bite of a nut-filled cake, she goes into shock. Her older brother Peter grabs her and starts tearing down the road, rushing to the hospital as fast as he can, while Charlie gasps for breath in the back seat. That's when Charlie decides to stick her head out the window, hoping it will help her catch her breath. Peter frantically swerves out of the way of a dead deer in the road, and the unthinkable happens. There's a sickening thud, and Charlie's head goes flying off her shoulders. It's a moment that comes out of absolutely nowhere. Audiences were expecting Charlie would be a major character throughout the film, but not even halfway into the story, this 13-year-old girl has been decapitated, and that look on Peter's face is the same look we all had when Charlie's head went tumbling down the road. After escaping a store filled with psychos and a parking lot crawling with killer bugs, the five survivors dive off into the mist, hoping to find help. They drive for hours, and eventually their car runs out of gas. As they sit on the side of the road, they think about what might happen if they get attacked by that thing with the spiky tentacles, or if they're webbed up by those giant spiders. Getting ripped apart by otherworldly monsters is nobody's idea of a peaceful death, so they choose to take their own lives. Unfortunately, they only have four bullets, so the leader of the bunch does the deed, offing everybody, including his eight-year-old son. It's an absolutely devastating scene. The car is filled with corpses, and our hero is screaming at the top of his lungs. But then, adding insult to injury, the military comes rolling on by. If only the survivors had waited a minute or two, they would have found salvation. Instead, The Mist has one of the most hopeless endings in cinematic history, one that still wrecks horror fans to this day. Freddy Krueger is one of cinema's most ingenious serial killers. He's turned victims into puppets, smashed them into TVs, and morphed them into motorcycles. But Krueger's most iconic kill is still one of his very first, when he turns Johnny Depp into Old Faithful. The premise of A Nightmare on Elm Street is simple. Don't fall asleep, or else Freddy Krueger will kill you in your dreams. But poor old Glenn just can't stay awake. So when he drifts away in his bed, that's when Freddy shows up ready for fun. His gloved hand comes out of Glenn's mattress and drags the screaming teen down into the abyss. There's a pause, just for a second, and then gallons and gallons of blood shoot out of the bed. It's dark, red, and disgusting, and the geyser seems to last forever. The Omen follows U.S. Ambassador Robert Thorne, a man who suspects his adopted son Damien might be the spawn of Satan. 
And Thorne isn't the only one who thinks Damien might have a really bad dad. Photographer Keith Jennings also wonders if Damien has demonic DNA, so he teams up with Thorne to undercover the truth about this creepy little kid. Eventually, their quest takes them to Israel, where they learn there is only one way to defeat the Antichrist. Stab him with seven sacred daggers. Naturally, Thorne is reluctant to murder his adopted son, but Jennings is totally gung-ho about preventing Armageddon. But as he goes to collect the knives, the forces of evil decide that Jennings has got to go. When a work truck accidentally rolls downhill, a giant pane of glass goes flying out of the bed. Jennings looks up at the exact wrong moment, and the glass sheet sends his head spinning through the air in slow motion. It's an incredible special effect, one that shocks us no matter how many times we've seen it. David Cronenberg is the king of body horror, and his disturbing powers are on full display in Scanners. Released in 1981, Scanners takes place in a world where psychics exist, and naturally, people who can read minds are the next big step in private security. In the film's most explosive scene, a security company called Consec plans on showing off their scanner service by having a mild-mannered mind reader demonstrate his abilities. Unfortunately, when he calls for volunteers, he picks a guy named Daryl, who happens to be a super powerful telepath. Even worse, Daryl is kind of an evil jerk. When the unassuming scanner tries to get into his brain, Daryl turns the tables. The poor guy begins to shake and twitch as Daryl attacks his mind, smiling and sneering the entire time. The unassuming scanner is clearly in pain, suffering the world's worst headache, and when the psychic pressure becomes too much, his head explodes all over the place. Blood and brains go flying everywhere, and the scene is still absolutely mind-blowing today. A common trope of the horror genre is that hillbillies are all psychopaths just waiting to chop you up with a chainsaw. But Tucker and Dale vs. Evil subverts that cliché by showcasing two lovable good old boys whose vacation is interrupted by a group of college kids that mistake them for Deliverance-style rednecks. And since these kids have seen one too many horror movies, they declare war on the backwoods bumpkins. Of course, these kids aren't exactly skilled when it comes to murder, and every time they try to murder Tucker and Dale, they just end up killing themselves in progressively more gruesome ways. Perhaps the most jaw-dropping moment comes as Tucker is tossing logs into a wood chipper. That's when one of the college kids, armed with a screwdriver, sneaks up on Tucker and tries to jump on his back. Unfortunately, Tucker bends over at the exact moment, and the kid goes sailing right into the machine. A horrified Tucker does his best to pull the guy out, but he gets covered in gooey red bits of college student. The scene is equal parts horrendous and hilarious, and Tucker makes it even funnier when he asks the mangled-up kid one very dumb question. Are you okay? Near the end of this home invasion thriller, our hero Erin has dispatched the masked killers who butchered her boyfriend's family. But there are still more foes to face. As it turns out, the assassins were hired by her boyfriend's brother, Felix, who was hoping to kill his family so he could inherit his parents' fortune. Unfortunately, Felix didn't know that Erin was basically an Australian Jason Bourne. So when the two finally throw down, Aaron gets clever with some kitchen utensils. But while pots and knives come in handy, Aaron lands the final blow by shoving the blades of a blender into the top of Felix's head. And then, to make sure that he won't get away, she plugs the blender into the wall and makes herself a brain shake. The scene takes all the elements you need for a fantastic horror movie death, creativity, comedy, and a whole lot of gore, and blends them together perfectly, so to speak. Bill Murray's appearance in Zombieland is the greatest cameo of all time. There's no debating this. It's a scientific fact. But what makes it so great? Well, first of all, Murray is playing himself, trying to survive the zombie apocalypse. Second, Murray is blasted to Kingdom Come in one of the most hysterical deaths ever put to film. It all starts innocently enough. A group of survivors hanging out in Hollywood decide to spend the night in Murray's mansion. At first, the house seems abandoned. But then, the comedian comes stumbling out of the shadows. His skin is pale, his arms are outstretched, and he's moaning like he's one of the living dead. As it turns out, he's just pulling a prank, but Columbus isn't in on the joke. When Murray staggers into the room, Columbus whips out a shotgun and shoots the actor at point-blank range. The joke is perfectly timed and incredibly shocking, especially when Murray reacts with his trademark deadpan wit. Is that how you say hello? Where are you coming from? Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't believe I shot Bill Murray. The real kicker comes when Murray's accepted that he's a goner. Do you have any regrets? Garfield, maybe? Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about horror movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.